What does that say? <laughs> bye bye, Mitch. Absolutely. Bye bye, Mitch. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye -bye. Oh boy. Bye -bye. Poor Mitch. Yeah, no, poor us for having to deal with Mitch. Right. Um. Yeah, let's start with that. The well. Steelers just released Mitch Trubisky, Presley Harvin, and Chooks Bye bye. You could call him like the axis of evil or something, but I mean, <laughs> I want to know why now. Why does it have to be? I mean, are they so sick of them that they had to be like, I, I, I don't want to spend one more minute looking at your face. And get out of here because it's basically. Basically, I mean, it's not even the beginning of the league year yet. It's basically like right at the Super Bowl. It's like, bye, go. Like, why now? Maybe they're trying to get their, their house in order. You know what I mean? Like, maybe they're trying to, you know, shed cap space and bring in Ryan Tannehill and, you know, all that, all that fancy jazz. That's just what I'm, that's what I'm thinking. It is timing wise. They could have done it anywhere between now and free agency, but maybe they just want to get things started. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would agree. I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, <laughs> get this big, you know, uh, cheerleading thing going on, but maybe they're finally doing things right because these are three guys that needed to go, right? Um, Trubisky, I've, I've said all along, he's a mistake from the very beginning. This is a kid who came out of his junior year in North Carolina, only played like 13 games, really um, overrated, thanks to PFF, which we won't even get started on them, but maybe we will later. <laughs> Uh, his 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 draft value skyrocketed. Uh, and now he's a first round pick. He stunk in Chicago. He had one half decent year. He lucked in the Pro Bowl because somebody got sick. Stunk in Buffalo. Stunk here. Kid's been a, an absolute bust everywhere he's gone. He shouldn't have come here. We shouldn't have paid him the money. I mean, that's just all it was to it. Uh, Harvin, another guy. You know, I know he won the Ray Guy Award. Um, there's another guy out of Iowa that's going to probably win it. I think won it this year. I, I get it. Those are attractive. These young punters. Great punters in college, sexy, not worth a draft pick. To me, it's never worth a draft pick. Uh, you can go get a good punter in free agency. You can get uh, a punter in a supplemental draft, whatever it may be. Uh, I don't want them drafting a punter this year or next year or forever. It's just big waste. And Chook's, Chook's mouth probably got him in more trouble than the other two. But those are three guys that needed to cut. They saved a lot of salary cap in doing so. So, hey, uh, and it's only, what, February 3rd, 12th? So, um, yeah, I'm with you, Allison. It's good that they're doing it early and doing it now. Gives me a little bit of hope that they yeah. realize the error of their ways. Um, yeah, yeah the, the Presley Harvin thing. Um, mm. He looked so good in training camp. If he was, if there was a training camp Hall of Fame, he would be. He would be in. He would be in the punter's <laughs> wing of the training camp Hall of Fame. Every punt in training camp, you know, it just looked gorgeous. And then you get to the regular season and he's rocking 20, 20 yard punts. And like the entire philosophy of the Steelers now is ground and pound, run it, good defense. Well, when, when you have that field position is key and having a good punter is a must. And this schmuck was rattling off 20 yard punts at the worst possible times. Like, dude. I don't care. Yeah. I don't know. It, what was even worse is every once in a while he would give you a glimpse of what he was in college, right? Right. He'd, right. He'd boom one. And you're like, holy crap. I mean, there's a 60 yard punt or 59 yard punt, whatever you needed. Right. And then you'd follow up, like Joe said, the next are 20 yeah. to 25, 30 yard punt. So, yeah, he'd, he'd constantly, every once in a while, you know, he would give you hope. And you're like, this is the, this is the Presley Harvin that, that we drafted, right? This is the Presley Harvin that we need to have these are the kind of punts that we need to have to have great field position. And yeah. And then he would, he would just take it where he would yeah. take a step back with the next punt. It was like, what the, what's going I, on? I kind of thought, you know, his rookie year, uh, unfortunately he lost his dad. I know he went through a lot with his dad. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so you sit there and you say, well, you hope, hope he can rebound. And I was glad the Steelers retained him to give him that shot that I thought he deserved at that point. But, you know, still at this point, I mean, uh, and that's one of the guys where he may go somewhere else and do well. Maybe he just needed to get away from Pittsburgh altogether, get away from all the stuff that happened to him while he was here. Who knows? So, you know, good good for him. Mitch Trubisky belongs in a broadcast booth or maybe playing for um, one of those UFL teams or whatever they're going to be, the Rock. Right. 
Well, that's yeah. for the rock. That's another thing. It's this is what I'm wondering with with Trubisky and Chooks. Um, quarterback is a very um, sought after position. So is offensive tackle. Why didn't mm. you try to trade him for something? Yeah, Kavali even a six that. round maybe draft. Did, though. We don't know. Like maybe they did. Maybe they did try to trade him, and maybe the offers. I don't. You know, I don't know. Nobody. <laughs> hey, does knows. anybody want Chooks? No. Right. Okay. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, because you're right though. <laughs> Offensive lineman with starting experience. You know what I mean? Like he's he's had he's been in. He was a gift assistant, but you know what I mean? Like you would think it would be a sought after. Sought All after three service. of those guys will probably be in a training camp next year at some yeah. point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I don't think Mitch should even the other two will be. I, I could I could see those phone calls. It's like, hey, I got a trade offer for you. Okay, what do you got? Mitch. And it's, as soon as he says Mitch, the guy hangs <laughs> up. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I guess. Um like John shoot. Candy giving away the Casio watch and playing. <laughs> yeah. I've got seventeen dollars <laughs> and a nice Casio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah, and um Chooks, I don't know what he said, but he pissed off somebody because I mean mm-hmm. he wasn't that bad, and yeah, he would have been an expensive backup. But dang, dude, I don't know what he said, but it. I guess you know if if we you know believe the rumors or whatever, he was he was basically insubordinate. He was basically, and I mean he might have been right, but I guess you're not allowed to say it. Right. You know, he was complaining about the offense, but yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean, I think it was, I think it was more to do with Broderick Jones. You know, what I mean, if they didn't have Broderick Jones, I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. that they wouldn't have have moved on so quickly. You know, even though it wasn't his natural position, and and again with the draft coming up, I mean, there's a lot of really good looking tackles. You know what I mean? Including, you know, a couple of uh, Broderick Jones former teammates. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> I think that they're just looking. It was more of like an eye, an eye to the future than than what he'd said in the past. I think anyway. Well, oh yeah, it it makes you wonder if they're going to start getting active real quick in free agency because uh, let's see, Mitch was an eleven million dollar hit, Jix was an eight million dollar hit. I'm not sure what Harvin was, but uh, so there's nineteen mil off the books right there, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. maybe they are, you know, in, in being that Mitch is one of them. Right, because right now you're down to a one quarterback team because Mason Rudolph doesn't have a signed contract yet. So Mm-mm. maybe they are going to go after a Justin Fields, or maybe they will go for a Tannehill of, of the two that rather have Fields. But um, mm-hmm. we know Mike Tomlin's big on Fields, uh, so who knows? So maybe they're going to make a splash here. The the talk is of the just just the past couple of days is um, uh, Mason wants to go. Um, they want remember. they want to bring in Ryan Tannehill and Tomlin loves Justin Fields. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Um, uh, Schefter said that, right? I mean, Adam, Schefter said, um, yeah, Schefter, yeah, Schefter said that. Schefter said that he was going to go. You know, that Tomlin was going to take time off, and because his wife loved LA, that he was going to go to the Chargers. <laughs> or whatever. Like, whatever, Schefter. Like, so you think I it was like a like a. You know, one of those BS like let's 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 get something That's going. That's kind of what like... I'm thinking. I mean, he could be. Maybe he is a big fan of Justin Fields. It doesn't mean that the two are necessarily connected. You know what I mean? Like he's not a free agent. You know, it would take and and Rooney obviously. You know what I mean? Like it could all just be lip service. But he stepped back what he said last week. You know, initially he came out and said, you know, the door's open to to a quarterback trade, and then the next day he went on air with. TAE's Andrew Stockton was like, you know, that's not really what I meant. You know what I mean? So it's like, you sort of wonder like, why did he say that? Like, why did he come back so soon and say that, 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 that wasn't really a thing. Like, is he trying to protect Pickett or is it truly like they're not going to make a big splash, you know, and, and training for a quarterback. I sort of feel like they're not going to trade for a quarterback. I feel like of the two, I feel like Tannehill's maybe more like, you know what I mean? Like more of an option because he's a free agent and because he's going to be cheaper and because, you know, um, Arthur Smith has experience with him. I mean, why not? Yeah. You know, he's, um, and I, I don't know if that's part of the, maybe not a Flacco syndrome where he's 38 and they think they're going to catch the lightning in a bottle with him too. Uh, I know he knew the system Arthur Smith ran uh, and, and, and Dan Hill is pretty good at protecting the football as well. 
Uh, but you already have a quarterback, Kenny Pickett, who for all his faults did very well protecting the ball uh, in place. So maybe you bring him in. He's a second or third stringer. I'd be okay with him as a third. Hope you don't have to pay him too much money. But I, uh, everyone else don't bring him in. Well, who else are you going to really get? So if he's sitting there at third spot. I don't have too much of a problem with it. If anything, he can help develop Pickett or whoever might be there. But yeah, yeah. The other thing too is there's some other players out there making noise. Yesterday or <clears throat> Saturday, Fletcher Cox uh, made it a point to say he would love playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now here's a guy that's you know a veteran of Philadelphia, has a Super Bowl with the Eagles, and that we need we need defensive line depth. So I I would definitely welcome Fletcher Cox joining the Steelers defensive line. We could use it. I love Cox. I love. Cox. I'm talking about Fletcher Cox, he is, but he is like really old. He's he's up there, he, but he's, he's younger yeah, he's than Cam Hamer, right? What, he, he is, yeah. There you go. He's he's he's, he's probably <laughs> just as old as Cam Hamer. So yeah, he would. Hey, you know what? As as bring him on. I don't care. I mean, Fletcher Cox is always like considered one of the best and mm-hmm. linemen. So hey, br- bring it, bring it. They they need to do something. Um, I'm really excited. That. To see the year two of Omar Khan and, and, and Andy White and what this front office does, I think we're in for some really interesting things. But dang, what do you think it would take to get Justin Fields? If it's anything anything higher than a third rounder, I don't. And, and you know what? I don't even want to give up a third rounder for him. I don't know. Maybe uh, a fourth and a fifth or something like that. Like a, a, I could. I can see that being something like a third rounder this year, second rounder next year. Mm. It's, it's going to take, it's yeah. going to take some. I mean, you're talking about a kid like that he's going. young still, not, he's a healthy quarterback. Um, you know, he has shown production. He, he, the price is going to be high. It's not going to be, it's not like he stunk. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't great in Chicago. Maybe it was, a, he was a, you know, a, a, maybe it was the system, maybe, you know, whatever, who knows, but, I feel like Chicago, like right. Chicago has been burned by the Steelers, <laughs> you know, after Chase Claypool. And it's like, oh, I don't know, guys, yes. probably like, I yes. don't know, I don't want to do business with yep. you guys anymore. You guys kind of screwed us. Go yeah, you got you Merrill know, Hodge so. after uh, we, we traded you Merrill Hodge after we got the best out of him. And Right, yeah. That's you know, crazy, it's right? not been a great no great thing. Mm-hmm. Well, basically, if the trade was Chase Claypool for Mitch Trubisky, I think we both lost out of that. But, okay. Chase Claypool for um for Mitch Trubisky and Joey Porter Jr. Okay, that was a great trade. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> if you look at yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. Didn't Cordell Stewart go to the Bears too at some point? I don't know if it was he right did. After. You're right. He did. Yeah, we. Yeah, the Bears have had a lot of sloppy seconds. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> interesting history. Yeah, um, I don't. I elites. Uh, Fields is an elite runner. I don't yeah, no know question. if he's. A good quarterback, though. And right. He, I don't think he's you know. Lamar Alexander. I, I feel like some people think he should be or he is, and I, I don't know. I don't Lamar know. Alexander, wow. Who's Lamar Alexander? Yeah, was, that, um, was that a running back? Great. It was great. It sounds like a great name, though. Yeah. For sure. That's the, that's the love child of uh, Lamar Jackson and Sean yeah. Alexander. Yeah, right. Sean Alexander. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Lamar yeah. Jackson. Um, Wait, we're on a Valentine's Day tear here. With I know. We're, we're right. all kinds of saucy today. Um, from love childs. I mean, but just <laughs> feels, I still feel like you never know with him, right? Because look at Lamar Jackson. Like, we all thought he was never going to be a passing quarterback, right? We always thought it was just going to be his legs and blah 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 he's turned into but it's taken him quite a you know what i mean like it's taken him quite a, that's, that's, quite a few it, it years could be, it, and it quite just, a few offensive coordinators to get to where he's at so it I just mean, could yeah. be a change of scenery maybe right. he comes he comes in the system or maybe he watches lamar jackson what he's doing and then how he is a better passer and stuff it's like oh i could mm-hmm. do that too because i mean justin right. fields is, is is as good of a runner if not better than lamar jackson it's just mm-hmm. he can't pass worth crap so right right yeah maybe maybe I, he'll just maybe he'll just mature or something i don't know I could see him possibly thriving. I mean, he comes back, he could be a comeback player of the year here, right? I mean, who mm-hmm. knows? But you're right, Allison. It's a good point. Um, sometimes it just takes the right scenery and everything. So it's it's still up in the air. The, I, the other thing about it that's fun is if they bring in fields, all of a sudden now you have a real quarterback controversy. Right. You bring in Dana Hill, I think Pickett's still the guy. Uh, you bring in fields, all bets are off. Then fields is the and, guy. If you spend that much, Joe, like you're right. If you spend that yeah, much, you have to be. Fields, Fields is the guy. Exactly. Now, exactly. Now you can't think uh, it's number two. 
here's the thing. When when Mitch Trubisky, when the when the Steelers got Mitch Trubisky, it was in free agency of 2022. First day. First day. Mm-hmm. First minute. They're right. like, we're, we're getting this guy. The Steelers were in love with Mitch Trubisky and thought he was the dude. This is before they even drafted Kenny Pickett and before they even knew they could get him. And it's like, Mitch is our dude. Right. All yeah. I'm saying is look at this look at the 49ers who are supposed to be geniuses and look at them with Trey Lance. Look at all all over the league. You see teams m- misevaluate quarterbacks all the time. Johnny all Manziel. I'm saying is qu- quantity. Bring right. in a bunch of dudes. Get Justin Fields. Get right, right Tannehill. But <laughs> Ryan right Tannehill. Get get a whole bunch of dudes because you don't know who's gonna show up, who's gonna actually play well. Uh, Nobody believe me, the 49ers didn't think Brock Purdy was the dude. He just no. you know they wouldn't have they wouldn't wait till the seventh round to get him if he, if they <laughs> thought he was so darn good. They just mm-hmm. got him on a whim. It's like, yeah, I guess we'll get this guy. And then look what he turned out. Just you never know. Just just get a bunch of dudes in here and let's see what happens. Let's see who's good. Yeah, I Best agree. Part I, of that I'm goes- sort of on the I'm sort of on the thing that they should draft one later. In the later rounds, and then take at least one or two street free agents. Because it's a very what, deep quarterback draft. You're right. What are You're you right. gonna? Oh. What are you gonna lose? There's nothing to lose and everything to gain, right? Because you don't oh, know. Nick could be Nobody there. Knows. I mean, there could be. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But that's funny you should say that, Joe, because that's kind of what happened to the 49ers. I thought uh, on media day, Shanahan was telling a story. I thought it was funny that you know the owner of the 49ers came in uh, the year they. Um, with the year they drafted Purdy, and he said, "So how's everything looking, guys?" And they look at each other like, "Well, right now the third stringer, which was Purdy, is the best guy in the camp right now." <laughs> and like he said, the owner just got like wide eyed, like, "Oh God!" It's turned yeah. out pretty good. So yeah, yes. Yep. I think you know. the seventh round pick every year should be a quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> yep, no punters. Seriously, so seriously, right on the on the off team. chance that you hit on the next Brock Purdy, go for it, man. Mm-hmm. And not that schmuck, not, not that poor kid that they they drafted a couple years ago that was just a camp arm that didn't throw Lodekin, one ball. Remember Chris Lodekin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like no, and, and actual like I mean Brock Purdy played like a ton in in um college. And Trey Lance. I don't think I don't think he knows what a football looks like. I don't know. I think I think if you gave him a football and a golf ball, he would try to probably it's like, oh, that's he would probably pick up the golf ball and think it's a football or something like that. He bar- <laughs> he barely played at all. Mm-hmm. Just do it right. every year. It's just, you know, it's just, and if it doesn't work, oh well. But but backup quarterback is the quarterback is the most important position and they they fall like flies. You got you mm-hmm. gotta get a, you gotta have to have a, you know, you gotta be three, four deep at that position. Yep. Yeah, well, you saw it happen last night, and I, I still can't believe Shanahan would put the ball uh, in Mahomes' hands with a chance to win the game because you know what? Mm. I mean, that was dead sentence right there. Um, they had to score a touchdown in a drive. They didn't, and then they knew it was over. You talk about um, the, the end of the fourth quarter. Yeah. yeah. That was the game in, right in there. Overtime, in overtime. You, you needed to you needed to defer, and so mm-hmm. you put the ball in Mahomes' hands. And I mean, that, this is a team – you look at the Chiefs and what they've done. I mean – it's a Steeler fans, right? We're looking at it saying, well, how do we get to be where the Chiefs are? Mm. It's actually not as far away as you think. Mm. They only finished 15th in total offense this year. We had six games of 21 points or more. They only had seven, right? Mm-hmm. So, they, I mean, they didn't have a 1,000-yard rusher. They didn't mm-hmm. have a 1,000-yard receiver. Mahomes had a okay season. Right, not an MVP very season, Mahomes. You know, but then what do they do? They flip a switch. They go on their road. They beat Josh Allen. They go and they beat the Ravens. Then they go to the Super Bowl and they beat the 49ers. And it's just the way they the way they are uh when they mm-hmm. get in there. But yet through the regular season, they were better than us, but not by a lot offensively. Their defense is what really got them to where they needed to be. So mm-hmm. it's kind of funny when you look at that, how they came along and were able to squeak in. And there you go. Yeah. Mahomes is Michael Jordan. And yeah. You yeah. knew you knew you weren't going to beat Michael Jordan, um, but uh, there's two things that the three things that make that team go: Mahomes, Kelsey, and Andy Reid. Andy Reid isn't getting much younger, and Kelsey is what 
35 something like that he's or, or no he's he's up there he's up there and i think he's starting to slow down already so i think i think the chiefs unless they start getting some really good receivers and and help mahomes out mahomes is amazing but he can't do it all by himself right. and yeah. he almost did do it all by himself but I have a feeling there's a crack in that armor, and I have a feeling the Chiefs aren't going to be that good next year un until I, – I, I think they're going to have a Kelsey problem, and not just him being a jerk and pushing around at his coach, which – which yeah. what, what the hell, dude? That's that's inexcusable. That's that's just – that's just insubordinate. That was just horrible. You 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 – Imagine, like, what what kind of example did that set for everybody? Like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. you could just push it, yell at your boss, and push him around. Like, dang. Right? Yeah, yeah. I was okay up until the point he made contact with him. I mean, obviously Reed's mm -hmm. gonna play it down afterwards, but yeah, I mean, he he looked like a spoiled, entitled brat at mm -hmm. that point. You know, yeah. um, that was that was kind of rough to watch. You, you're right. Yeah. Um, if Andy Reid, I get it though, him. right? I mean, heat of battle. He's wide open. But he's mm -hmm. a competitor. It's way he's always been. He's most likely a, fu a future Hall of Famer, first ballot. Uh, but you gotta you gotta keep it together, Joe. Even like you said, at 34, 35 years old, which is where he's mm -hmm. at, um, you should know better. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was pretty poor. And I, I have to think that that's a little bit of the effect, knowing that all those cameras were a little bit more on him lately than normal. And that's not Taylor Swift's fault or anything like that. It's just. You know the cameras are on you, <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah. I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I think upset. he. I mean, I he, love Andy Reid. I just think he's the biggest squishiest teddy bear ever. And <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, hmm. you know what I mean? Like if if he'd fallen, you know what I mean? Like if he right pushed him enough, which he almost he did, kind of a step aside, you know what I mean? And I was like, yo. I can tell you this, Travis, uh, Kelsey, watch if, out for Allison Kohler because that'd have been if, coming for you. If Gronk would have done that to Bill Belichick, he would have been on the bench. I oh, mean, no question. No, no, no question. question. I don't know for the rest of the game, but uh, right. he would have been put in his place for a little bit. So, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. but yeah, overall, um, great, great game last night. Imagine if the Chiefs lost. That would have been the biggest story because Kelsey didn't even apologize afterwards. He's like, oh, yeah, we were just having fun. We were just I'm telling him I love him or something like that. Like, yeah. like, like joking it off, like. If they lost, that would have been a huge story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's still a pretty big story. I, I before we got on here, I was eating dinner with with my my wife there, and uh, I know the nightly news was going to have a report and update on that incident. So, I mean, I made the nightly news uh, mm -hmm. national news for tonight. I didn't get to see the story, but um, you're right, Joe. It's pretty big and it would have been massive if had they lost. They would have gone back to that and said, "Oh, what's going on?" And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but. They, they they pulled it out like they do, and Kyle Shanahan just you can you can make the accusation he can't win a big game because two times teams have lost in overtime in Super Bowl history, and he was the coach both times. Mm -hmm. So, and not to mention the Falcons, right? I mean, how they lost that game, I still remember that. I'm just yeah. He was offensive coordinator of that that Falcons game, mm -hmm. and I just hate that. That's one of the Patriots victories. Oh, was that because I mean how do you how do you give up how do you give up yeah. twenty eight to three that's just and that's just unbelievable right Un unbelievable um I've heard Kyle Shanahan compared to Marv Levy which I think is a little unfair but I mean Marv Levy was still a great coach it just sucks that you know he you know he couldn't get the bills over the top but I mm -hmm. think he's more he's he's actually I've also heard him compared to a younger Andy Reid like Andy Reid when he, when he was with the uh the Eagles it's mm -hmm. like this great offensive innovative mind but yeah, you just can't win it. the big one and mm -hmm. I think that's unfair I mean that game was that game was very close uh in the, late in the fourth quarter if they um, if the 49ers make a first down, they, they run down the clock, they kick the game winning field goal. That's it. They win the game. It was right. that it was like third and four or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's how close the game was. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's it's just one of those things. It's, you know, every game comes down to like a few plays and, and just, it just happened to be that the, the few plays went the, went the chiefs way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They gave them homes yeah. way too much time. There at the end, at the end of regulation. Oh, Half you knew. Show was oh, go ahead. You knew when it was like 
like less than like a little less than two minutes left, you knew Chiefs were going to at least kick a field goal there. Right. You like like yeah. that's a guarantee. That's right. like you know that that's yeah. a joke. Is that like they gave so and so too much time? They literally gave you don't give Mahomes two minutes. That's yeah. that's an automatic score, and it gave them plenty of time to look up the overtime rules. Right? I mean, they should have known. They should have known. Right? Yeah. Yep. I mean, who? Yeah, I didn't know them, but apparently the 49ers did it either. <laughs> yeah, no, so I didn't. guess the Chiefs so were I... like, "Hey, we've been talking about this this very scenario for a couple of weeks, whether they were or not, who knows? You know what I mean?" But hey, yeah, they knew it. They knew what was going to so, happen. So it's like another game. So it was like, so let's say they didn't score at the end; it was still tied at the end of the the, the first overtime period. So they just keep laying. I, I don't. I don't know how that how I don't I, I guess that's how that works. I don't know. Or no, I guess it is sudden death, but right, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they say that McCole Harmon did not know that 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 he just won the Super Bowl when he caught that touchdown pass. I doubt mm-hmm. that because he was celebrating. And right. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Who knows? But I mean, I think one of the 49ers did say something like, like, total, like, oh, if we score first, we win the game or something like that. Or, right. Or, yeah. Or we yeah. had it wrong. So I was like, mm-hmm. I didn't uh, end up seeing what the Gatorade color was. Purple. It was purple. Oh, I had purple and I switched to red. Oh, ah, no. Damn, prop that. Here's gone. something. Here's something that, 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 not, now that's something that you could, you could find out about. Um, uh, apparently you look at the the betting lines like if late in the late on the sunday afternoon like all of a sudden all the money goes to one color of gatorade <laughs> then, you, then you know that's what the what the color is or whatever um yeah yeah i always make the the, the joke that like you know i bet the house on the on the coin flip or something like that you know i i mean it, it's fun it is fun oh here's here's my favorite um bet that happened apparently brock purdy rushing yards the, the over under was like 13 mm-hmm. and going into going like during like during most of the game he actually got like 13 yards or 14 yards or something like that but one time at the end of the game he kneeled down and that was a negative rushing play and it oh. brought back down to the under oh no um, um. My favorite was what shade of lipstick was Taylor Swift going to wear? I thought that was a good one. <laughs> Obviously uh, red. Yeah. Well, she'd worn, I think, like orange or yellow, a few home games or something like that. <laughs> or like a orange yellow or something. Like, I don't know. It was pretty funny. So, uh, I, uh, yeah. That, that whole, yeah, between between the Kelsey meme of, of him yelling at the coach and, um, and Taylor Swift and, uh, yeah, my favorite thing of that was because Kelsey's brother was in that box too, and so is Ice Spice, and she has this red curly hair. <laughs> and I, the one caption was, "I love your song. The sun sun will come out t- tomorrow." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh god, she does look like Little Orphan Annie, right? Yes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. You know what? Last year. What were the two biggest, two of the biggest stories? The grass sucked, mm-hmm. and the and the refs right. determined the game. This year, we really didn't hear anything about the refs mm-hmm. or the grass, so that's mm-hmm. that's a plus. It was just you know the, the it was just a, a game that that you know a regular game. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, no, I I thought the game was very good. It was probably one of the better Super Bowls in the last few years. Uh, halftime show was solid. Um, I wouldn't say it was epic, and a lot of people are flipping out. Um, I'll date myself here because like, especially the pop fans, I still feel 93 Michael Jackson is probably the, the one to always beat. Um, and I thought Prince was better than, than Usher was last night, but oh, yeah. Usher did a great job. I didn't like how he started out slow. Uh, mm-hmm. I thought he should have went to a little bit more faster beat, but other than that, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, the, the dancing, the, uh, uh, um, oh my gosh, I'm having a mind fart. Uh, she looked she all in red. Uh she was dressed all in red. Um, Alicia, her? Keys. Alicia Keys. She looked phenomenal. Oh my gosh, she looked uh, amazing. She looked phenomenal. I mean, yeah. and everybody, it was good. It, it was a good halftime show. National anthem was good. That was um that was another funny meme of cause cause at one point Usher was like 
holding Alicia Keys real close and some it's yeah. like that. that's like that's like you and your work wife or something like that. Um yeah, it's just funny because Usher appeals to basically anybody Gen X or younger. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I was I was um I was in an office today with some older ladies and, and I heard them talking about the Super Bowl and it's like, well, I'm not really an Usher fan, so I didn't really care for it much. It's like, you know, it, it's just, you know, it, you know, some years they have the Rolling Stones out there and some years they have, you know, younger people. And it's just funny yeah. what they appeal to. Um, right. Yeah. Well, it's just like that. That that kills me. I was thinking about that today, Joe, because I, I posted something about that. And I know a few of the ladies have posted on it. I know what their ages are. And they were like, I didn't really care for it. just like you said. Well, you know what? Look, you can't appease anybody. We can't run, uh, you know, Alan Jackson and, and God rest his soul, Toby Keith and uh, Tanya Tucker and Willie Nelson out. And yeah, the country fans are going to love it, um, you know, and then but the the, the younger generation and the, the rap and the pop are going to hate it. And you put Prince out there. Some people are going to love it. Some people are going to hate it. You're going to have those idiot racists who are just like, oh, I didn't like it no matter what. Uh, it, the Rolling Stones, who I love, my favorite band of all time. They put at him out there, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, either way. I think you when you go to when you watch Super Bowl halftime show, you're just watching to watch a good show. Right. Yeah. You know, so yeah. give me this thing where, oh, it sucked. It, it didn't suck. Mm -hmm. You think it sucked, you suck. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, it I had entertainment like, value for sure. Yeah. Even if it's not your thing, right. for it him to come out I, on multiple songs, multiple sets, multiple outfits. Fits. Mm -hmm. He was oh on roller. God. He was on roller skates. Or what, what? I was like, "What? He's on skates." Yep. He's I need that blue and black outfit. That's the only way I look like I have a six pack. So I need. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, all these mul now, that was so complicated, and it could have gone mm -hmm. wrong so many different ways. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, the the song, yeah, with with yeah. Usher, Ludacris, and Little John, my number one favorite song of all time, and. So <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. As soon as I hear "Peace Up A Town," I'm like, yes. yes <laughs> so I was very. I didn't even recognize all the other songs because I'm not that, that much of an Usher fan. But that is my number one favorite song. Well, so I, everybody yeah. knows, yeah. The thing yeah. Was, I assume Allison's probably about ten years younger than you and I, Joe. But that reminded me a lot of college years, right? You and I are in college about the same time. It's, that was college in the in, in the club, man. I mean, so that's right. That's right. I can see yeah. you guys in the club. Yeah, yeah. Woo. <laughs> Bend over to the front, touch your toes. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And, and Can't the, do commercials, that anymore. the commercials, I know. Sorry, I blew it. I blew it because you were like, um, the commercials were okay. I thought they were good. a few good ones. Um, the Dunkin' Donuts one. Uh, at Phenomenal. first I thought um, I, like, I, I wasn't like paying attention or whatever, but then I saw it again like, oh my god. That was that was amazing. They they knocked it out of the park with that one. Tom Thank Brady. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he made a cameo. I was like, what? That, that, yep, was, Tom that Brady. was fantastic. And Matt <laughs> Damon and, and Ben Affleck Matt Damon's in there. Like, oh, it's like, yeah. He's like, he was all embarrassed. Like, how do you like them? Donuts. <laughs> um, but when when Jay was like, "Oh, you get out of here, Tom Brady, you can stay." Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep, uh, yeah, that one was good. I enjoyed the um, I enjoyed the one with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I thought that was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, there was there were a lot of good ones there. Um, there was some Doritos always usually brings its A game, and yeah. they stunk. That commercial mm -hmm. I didn't like at all. I didn't think that was very funny or mm -mm. didn't really get it. Um, but there were some that were pretty good. Like a good neighbor. Uh, yeah. I, I just wanted to me, it would have been perfect if, because one of my favorite, uh, things of, of Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice is it's not a tumor. Right. I, I wish he would have said that. Um, <laughs> get to the chopper. Get, yes. to, get to the job. Yeah. He did say that. Yeah. Um, did you see the Kia commercial? Oh my God. Yes. That was so heartbreaking or just so tear jerking oh my goodness that um one. there was the yeah, one with jennifer uber. aniston yes um, jennifer yeah uber eats Gen jennifer aniston not knowing who david schwimmer was that was right, yeah, yeah that was funny that that little that nfl commercial for that little boy in in africa in, in ghana mm -hmm. oh my goodness tear jerker that was a tear jerker that was that's a perfect yes. that's a perfect thing to show that the NFL is like a worldwide thing and mm -hmm. you know 
Yeah, that was that was amazing. Um, the, the Christopher Walken one was was, it was okay. pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh, so yeah, like I said, there weren't any that blew me away, but mm-hmm. they were they were good. They were good. Yeah. So I don't think since the last time we talked, because we well, the last time we did a show is prior to the NFL awards. The, the, the honors. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please tell me we're gonna at least discuss TJ Watt getting screwed. I don't think I've ever seen anybody get that hosed in my life. Do you have um, a problem with him not showing up? No. No, because I think he expected it. And, and you know, and I I guess I, I probably am naive. I don't buy into all the NFL conspiracies. I really don't think there's a lot there. A lot of people said it was the logo thing, the you know, but and the logo thing didn't end up being true. Uh, but you know, anytime you have a dynasty like you have the Chiefs, they're gonna conspiracy theory. We did it with the Patriots. We did it with the Chiefs. Um, st- the seventy Steelers were all on steroids. You know all that crap. But there was, without question, a push to have Miles Garrett as Defensive Player of the Year from Pro Football. Oh, Focus no question. And everybody back in August. From yeah, and from tra- like training camp on. The thing that killed me, I put that graphic up, Joe. I think some a few people did. They, when he got up, uh, he's getting up out of his chair, and they ran the graphic. Top 10 in all these categories. Who was number freaking one in all those categories? Exactly, yeah. I mean, the pro football focus, those guys are just such ass clowns. Sorry for Mm -hmm. the language. but And there's so much weight put into it and so overanalyzed and so much analytics. It's become the Bible, and I can't figure out how you could possibly take a guy who leads in every major defensive statistical category that really matters and does that. Yeah. And if you really want to break it down, uh, the double teams is crap. Uh, right. Pro football focus. I mean, it's just, it's. Watch it's, a game. Yeah, See how many times TJ Watt gets double teamed right. and right. held and, ta- and like, like, like yeah. they put a sleeper hold on him. Like he's like, like, like he's a, like, like he's going for the intercontinental title or something like that. Right. right. Yeah. My goodness. It, it, I'm sorry, guys. It is not a stealer thing for me. People can accuse me of that all they want. If Micah Parsons or if Miles Garrett would have mm-hmm. had the most sacks or if he right. would have had. Uh, the most fumble recovery. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. He deserved it. You're right. Mm-hmm. But yeah. he didn't. He mm-hmm. didn't. Not I, yeah. one. And I, yeah. I, I sort of had, I sort of took a little bit of, you know, I sort of felt like Watt should have been there. I feel like he should have been a better man. Like the, not a better man, the better man. You know what I mean? Like kind of show up and support Cam Hayward. I mean, at that point, he knew yeah. Cam Hayward was gonna get was gonna get Walter Payton man, Walter Payton man yeah. of the year. I just feel like there's there's so many pros to him having gone versus the negativity that he's that's now everybody's like, oh, no, 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 he's a big baby and whatever. You know what I mean? Like he could he should have just gone, just gone. I mean, yeah. I, I I understand that there were reasons why he didn't, but I, I mean, he was already in Vegas. You know what I mean? It's not like he had to take a special flight. It's you know it's I mean? it's like it's like sometimes the Academy Awards they give it to the complete wrong person or movie or something like that because it's like, well, it's their turn, and this is yeah. that. It's like, well, T.J. Watt already got a Defensive Player of the Year, so let's just give it to Miles Garrett, regardless of of reality, regardless of stats, regardless of anything. Let's just let's just it's his mm-hmm. turn. Like, mm-hmm. what are we what are we doing? Um, Mary Lemieux said the only the only awards that matter are championships and scoring titles because because nobody votes right. on them. Right. Yeah, that's true. That's true, and I, I hate to say that, but it just seems like, yeah. I mean, I, I was at that point. I was hoping. I wish Michael Parsons would have had a better statistical. And then he goes on there, and I forget who he did the interview with, and he's calling T.J. Watt out, and, and, and he's going along with. He said, "If you look at the stats, at the pro fo- pro football focus stats, mind you, that's how much they have bled into the society, especially the youth in these yeah. leagues. That yeah. These are it, it actually we expect." Miles Garrett to lead the league in sacks since he has a high, uh, high pass rusher uh, win rate, right? Pass Which rush, win rate, sacks, yeah. Predicting more sacks and pressures, yet he never does and he never has. Right. Yeah. And TJ Watt outperforms expectations since he does not lead the predictive stats. So mm-hmm. one of the things has to be true. Either he's outperforming or he's underperforming. Either way <laughs> – he wins because Miles Gunner Garrett's actually underperforming expectations mm-hmm. in that position. So because yeah. he doesn't lead any of the predictive stats. Mm-mm. So it, it just doesn't, no matter which way you try to paint it, it 
It doesn't make I, sense. I don't know. There are lies, there are damn laws, and then there are statistics. Mm -hmm. And that's just sad. You would yeah. think like the numbers are the numbers and the facts are the facts, and they're not because you could twist statistics to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And pro football focus, who is supposed to be this wonderful analytic uh, thing, mm -hmm. is just they hate the Steelers. And it's mm -hmm. just funny. And they go out of their way to to trash on the Steelers all the time. And it's just, it's just comical. Mm -hmm. Like you have you're the numbers are the numbers, but you twist the numbers and say whatever you want. And it's just mm -hmm. total BS. Yeah. Yeah. Not to and mention promoted it. like it's a, it's a media voted um, award. So they, they promoted the shit out of it. PFF from the beginning of training camp. Miles Garrett, this Miles Garrett, that every time Miles Garrett, you know what I mean? Sneezed, you know what I mean? They like put it was a graphic the about it. And right. it's like, it, that's what the media sees. And they're almost like sort of brainwashed. You know what I mean? It was his time. He hadn't, he hadn't won it before. And it's like, what, what does it have to do with anything? The Browns know. won right. defensive player of the year. Oh, they almost assistant swept. coach yeah. of the year. Comeback player of the year. You would have mm -hmm. thought that they went eight, 19 and 0 and won the Super Bowl 100 right. or nothing. Yeah, they won a lot. They won a lot of awards. I, I actually didn't have a problem with Stefanski. I know a lot of people thought it should have been Houston, but you know, Stefanski did a lot with a with very little. He had yeah, a hell of a lot of injuries. So hats off to Stefanski. And um look, Damar Hamlin was the better story. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't see how he shouldn't have won it. He probably should have. I mean, he almost died. But Flacco yeah. meant more to his team in win percentage and getting them there mm -hmm. and had a bigger impact mm -hmm. that way. So again, I don't have a problem with Flacco. So there you go, Browns fans. I'm okay with two of those. Right, they should yeah. have two awards. The they and, should have one Paul, coach um, for sure. Jim Schwartz most, was killing it. Most improved and comeback player of the year. You mm -hmm. split them up. Because right. yeah, yeah, because they they're really they really shouldn't be in the same category. I mean Tamar Hamlin came back from death, but right. yeah, he yeah. hardly played. He hardly so, played, yeah. you know, from the fact that he's still alive, that's you know, he he came right. back from 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 death. Yeah. Yeah. I can only hope that Watt comes out next year and absolutely obliterates the ever yeah. crap out of everybody. Yep. Or he's going to be dejected over it. I don't I don't know, but the, I mean, um the, the the Associated Press that the, the the panel that picks is like fifty people, not one of them in Pittsburgh. No, I've no. How the heck? Know. How the heck do you have all these uh, fifty people and right. not one of them anywhere near from Pittsburgh? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And yep. some of those, some of the, you look at some of those voters, they had an obvious anti steeler bias. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like the same with Elsie Greenwood. Uh, that was a, somebody tweeted that the other day. Um, so because the Super Bowl Sunday, or it was yesterday, Super Bowl Sunday. Who's the best player that's played or done well in a Super Bowl or whatever? It's not in the Hall of Fame. LC had four sacks in one Super Bowl, folks, on Hall of Famer Roger Staubach, right? He has the most ever of all time. He has five. I think Vaughn Miller has four and a half, and uh, Charles Haley has four and a half, right? LC Greenwood, he, the only reason he's not in is because it's an anti Steeler bias. I'm not saying that as a Steeler fan. I'm saying it's like Steeler, whatever you want to call it, Joe, uh, Allison, pick your term, but it's like, um, Steeler fatigue because there's too many Steelers oh, already in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. We can't put another one in. Yeah, you can. Right. I can care. If I he's care good about... enough, yes, you can. What's the mm -hmm. yeah? What's the problem here? They put Steve McMichael in. I love Mongo. He should have been in a long time ago when he was. He's still alive, but he's coherent and could have enjoyed it. I mean, he's a key yeah. part of that Bears mm -hmm. defense over the years. I mean, I have no problem with it. Man, that's no a sad. Problem. That's a sad story. Um, yeah. I, I I heard some of that story that you know he was uh, what was it last summer or something like that. He started to get pneumonia and he, and he said do not resuscitate. And his wife said, "Listen, you're going to make the Hall of Fame. You got to. I want you to be there. You got to stick around. You just got to hold out a little bit longer so you can be at the Hall of Fame." And yeah, he's poor man. Did you watch ALS. The segment? No, he, I didn't. He, it's, he, it's, ESPN ran the segment. Man. You should be able to look it up. It was it was tearjerker because it's yeah. like. You look at the my kid's nine years old. He's about ninety pounds. I mean, he looked no bigger than my son. I mean, this yeah. is a guy. You know, Joe and I go back. To, I don't know about you, Allison. Joe and I go back to some pretty good old wrestling days. And I mean, Mongo. <laughs> he was, he was one mean, of the four body, horsemen. <laughs> yeah, like body slam and Big John Stud and, and yeah. like four horsemen. I mean, he was right, like, right, massive. And he was called Mongo from the guy from Blazing Saddles, um, Alex Karras, I think. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, it, um, it was it was hard. But hard we we have to we have to end with giving our flowers to Cam Hayward, 
Walter Payton Man of the Year. He finally got it. Yeah. Um, gosh, what a just what a wonderful example of, of of a great stealer and a great person. And you know, I I wish more athletes would do this. And it's wonderful that they recognize somebody in nominee from each team. So there's somebody mm-hmm. from each team doing wonderful things in the community. I wish yeah. more players were like this. You know, you have your you have this wonderful platform where people look up to you. Use it for good, and nobody does more good than Walter Payton. I mean, Walter, than uh, Cam Hayward. My right. goodness, he is uh, he is just amazing. He's he's been a great player for years. Um, and I just and just whenever when, when that tree of life shooting happened, I think he lived very close to that, mm-hmm. and he basically like put the city on his back and he represented us so well. And I always remember that, and I always that that, that always. Um, uh, warms my heart. Just th- th- he's just such a wonderful person. His mom is wonderful. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and he does stuff in Atlanta too because his, you know, his, his dad yeah. did stuff in Atlanta. So uh, just, just hats off to him. Um, totally yeah. deserved. Uh, yeah, he yeah. he deserves all the. And he got to talk at the beginning before the game, which was really. Yeah, cool. I, I wasn't expecting that. I was really excited to see. Him. I was like, oh, that's so cool. That really Me too. Cool. I I love that. Um, he. I've told Joe this story, Alice. I don't know if I, I told you. So I, I don't always disclose where this was, but in my line of work, I run across a lot of fields and, and athletes and stuff like that. And so I ran in him and Connor probably in early July, late June. He was practicing at a local facility outdoors with Connor, uh, and they bring their own tackle dummy. So he has this big pickup truck he brings, and he's got all these his own tackling dummies in there, unloading them and everything. And um, this is at a public place and, uh, it's a, it's what we call a multi-purpose field, right? So it's, you know, soccer, lacrosse, football can be played on. And there's two of them. So they're parallel together like, like this, right? There's one field and then there's the other. So he's on the far side of the field and we were there a couple of times with him and, and got to say hi to him a few times. And I had a, an older gentleman with me that's a project manager for us. And I called him over and I said, this is my friend, Scott. And he just came over as nice as me. Hi, Scott. And Scott's from Columbus. And I said, Scott's an Ohio State guy. And he goes, oh, yeah. And they just started talking. But the best part about it was they came back over to the field, uh, the closer field, and there's a bunch of kids on the playground. I'm talking – we're talking kindergarten-type kids. And this one little girl late leads this little group of kids over, and they hide behind the tackling dummies. And they're all sitting there waiting, and then they jump out behind. They go, hi, Kim. And he goes, ah. You know, like <laughs> – I mean, just the biggest – in my mind, other than Troy Polamalu, the nicest, sweetest, most giving stealer I've ever met or seen. Uh, I'm proud to say I don't know him personally. I would well. I mean, in that meetings, uh, I, that's the only way I know him. But a very nice guy, very caring man, a gentleman, uh, and just yeah, a gigantic uh, man. He's was six foot four. Oh, he's a gentleman. Yeah, yeah he's, <laughs> he's huge, but. Yeah, uh, I love him, and I'm glad that he won it. And it made me so proud to be a fan in that instance that, that it was a Steeler that won it. So, made mm-hmm. made the year, Joe. Really, probably made the year. I've mm-hmm. I've heard that described as like the most prestigious award, and and it re- it really is. Yeah. It's just you know you think about like because it, it's not just it's not just you know like the 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 fourth string tight end that does good right. things. It's you know you have to be a good player and do great things in the community mm-hmm. and. He just oh Aww. look at the puppy. Hi. Look at the puppy. <laughs> What's the doggy's name? Say I'm Ewok, huh? Say hi, Allison. Hi, hi girl. Oh. Huh. We see Sophie all the time, don't we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what a no. cutie. He's sorry, he's been jumping on my leg here the last few oh, it's okay. Or hanging up always... attention to him. You have a tail behind me. That's all we see. It's it's all we see. I'm a floating tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, look at it. Uh But no, that's a great way to wrap up, Joe, because it was a great way to end for the season. Steeler season, it was subpar best, but great that he won it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. And this is sad because it's the end of the football season. And now we have, we have to wait another what? Seven, seven months for football. Oh, yeah. But, you know, the draft is, is going to be here soon. And then, the, you know, the, the off season work. I mean, it's going to be it, here. It never soon. ends. It never no, ends. It but, right. but yeah. you know, it's, real... we, we, 
football. Yeah. yeah the real football is gone because it's like, yeah, yeah we talk about, oh, mm -hmm. what are we going to do? What are they going to do? What are they going to do? It's like, but then we get, you know, it's so, so long to get to the actual game. So right. yeah, uh, yeah. this is, this is yeah. always sad. What am I going to do on Sundays now? going to clean. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, you know, I'm a NASCAR fan, so the Daytona 500 is coming up. I'll be. Oh, that, okay, okay, okay. I was gonna say maybe yeah, I have to like watch the Daytona 500. I guarantee you won't be sad about that. It's an awesome event. Um, really, my mind's right up there with the uh, with the Super Bowl. It's just there's always big stars, big national anthem. It's weird that the the, the, the the biggest event is at the beginning of the season. It it is weird. I think a lot of people that aren't diehards like me probably think that's weird, but it, it it's still. I mean, I'll watch every race or go to a few this year, but. It's just a lot of fun. So next this coming Sunday, tune in, guarantee. It's been sold out for months. I mean, it to, to have that many people there for that event, it's just a lot of fun. I heard going to one of those events is amazing. Oh, it's great. I can I can only imagine. That sounds amazing. Just just being there live with, well, with all that going on. I mean, some of the some of them can be very difficult to get out of because there's really not there's very few that have like a hotel right there. So it's like like Atlanta's notorious. You're in traffic almost five hours getting out of Atlanta Speedway. It's oh my god! I mean, that's it's, it's Atlanta awful. traffic anyway. So right, yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. But yeah, you know what else is like that? New England. Mm -hmm. New England Stadium is oh, like at Foxborough. 30, Foxborough. It's it's in the middle of nowhere, and they're like there's a one road in one. It's kind of like I go to a concert at Star Lake, and you're just you you just know you're just spending a couple hours in traffic, and then you, you know yeah. bring snacks and have plenty of gas. That's all you can do. Yep. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so yep. much. Bye. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Al. Happy, happy end of the football season. That's right. All right. We'll see you. All right. Go.